What's up, Backgammon fans? We are about to start match number three, and Sandra Lilov is off to a magnificent start so far. He's up 4-0, which is, I mean, that couldn't have gone any better, huh, for Sandra Lilov. Mochi is probably feeling the pressure. I know that he, he leaves the room after each match to go out and uh, analyze the, the match move by move. And yeah, okay, so we just have uh, Justin Noel coming down, distracting me here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I guess Mochi is, uh, is feeling the pressure a bit here. He, needs, he, he knows he needs to step up. Um, they had quite a difficult match, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see. I see a little bit of uh, some of your comments are surprised that uh, that the PR went all the way up to 4.1 for Mochi. I mean, I can ask them to verify, but I guess if it's in the scoreboard. Okay, we're off to match uh, match number three. I can see that Wilson has swapped the player cam just to show the viewers how it looks like at the venue here. We've got this cool bar here in Copenhagen and uh, we have about 30 people now we had more earlier but this is a marathon people can come and go as they want and I expect that we're probably going to see more and more people as we get closer to the the finals the final decision I guess we have a technical issue they seem to have stopped I wonder what's going on. So again, we're doing this live, guys, so we don't have the luxury of editing anything. We just got to go with the flow. Oh, there's a... Aha, okay, so... <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a power issue on the Tempest clock. Yeah, it's been running so far for two, and a, two matches and probably been on during the breaks as well, so that's quite a few hours for an old iPhone. So they got to... Plug in the power cord. There you go. Yeah. And it's charging. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, doing a live stream like this, there's like a, probably like a hundred contingencies that could fail. Like all of the different cables, all the connections, Ethernet. Oh, I, I think I got to go help them because this is my old phone. Hang on. I'll be right back. Oh, no, Wilson solved it. Wilson solved it. He figured that he just had to swipe up. <laughs> so this is our producer, Wilson, trying to... I don't know what's the... I mean, either it has power or it doesn't have power. I think they solved it. So, yeah, here we go. Mochi rolled a pretty good double one there. Got some. This is. This looks like an early prime versus prime formation. I think we're gonna see Sanders splitting the back checkers here. He wanna jump. Oh no 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 no! Wow, that's a big one. What a careless play, Sander I love. That was a huge blunder. You gotta combat your enemy's prime formation and split. Oh my god. What a terrible start from Sander. Yeah, Mochi does the right thing, you know. You need to fight the prime by splitting the back checkers. You gotta react to the priming threat. 3 1. I mean. Ah. So, what's Sander gonna do here? I think we're seeing some game one syndrome. It could be that distraction of the clock that kind of like shook Sander up a bit, distracted him. Yeah, he, he does have a decision here. Like, do you hit? But it just breaks so much structure. And the problem is he still has two men on the 24 point. You need to split, Sander. 
Mochi has already split his back checker, so he has an incentive to split his own. Go ahead and split your own back checkers. Yeah, that's the play. Good move, Sander. Oh, that's a good roll from Mochi here. He has two ways to play it. He can anchor up on the 21 and hit loose on the two point, or he can just make the most superior anchor on the 18 point. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna make this move. He's just taking a look at it. The the thing here is you're still getting primed a bit. Mochi's anchor on the on Sanders four point is behind a four prime essentially, a double gapped four prime. The 18 point anchor is simply superior. It's worth leaving that shot because this move al this move also leaves a shot, right? So you're gonna leave a shot either way. So why don't you just go ahead and make? The superior asset. There we go. You simply get more out of it. Hmm. <laughs> there is some blunder potential here. Uh, I mean, uh, hitting is pretty good. You put him on the bar, but you're still stuck behind the prime. That's the problem. And look at the pip count. Mochi is up. He's going to be up 12 pips, I think, after the right play. Yeah, 12, play, 12 pips. So, oh, 6 4. Good roll, Sander. He did manage to find the best play. Well played, Mochi. It took his time, but he did find the best play. So Sander has one man back here. He's trying to escape that last checker. He's up 12 pips. So if he can just get out of there, he will have a big advantage. He can't, but he can do something else here. He can go for the switching play, 8-2. to two. Beautiful move. Very effective roll here. Super effective roll. So he was looking to, to run the back check. Oh, this is a cube. That's a cube. Easy cube, actually. This The decision is on Mochi here. And how do we figure out this is a take? You know, you're on the bar. I mean, is it that nice to take it? But I guess my my way of thinking about these positions where it's it's like a holding game with some extra attack is if uh, if the offensive player has a lot of a lot of pips to play on the other side of the board, he's going to spend many rolls bringing his checkers home, and that just gives Mochi a chance to win this game. As we can see, look at the winning chances. Mochi is actually still winning 32%. It's because Sanders still has a lot of work to do. Getting that checker on the 21 point all the way back home. And the checkers in the outfield as well. The bar point anger is actually very strong. Yeah, it is a tough decision. It is a tough decision. It really is. I mean, there's a chance that he might pass this cube. He knows that he has high winning chances. He can come in with a one, and you play a holding game with a goalkeeper. A lot of contact still. Okay, he does drop it. Yeah, I mean... This is a, for a human player, this one was tough. I hope that I would have found the take. I think I, I think I feel like I'm a favorite to find the take there, but that was a tough decision for Mochi. And uh, the cruel thing about it is that you get penalized with a blunder, you know, even though sitting there over the board, this was such a tough decision. 6 four. Let's see if Santa knows how to play the opening here. Very good. The opening reply. Not one of Sander's strongest elements of his game, how to play the opening reply role, second and third role, but he just have a, a great intuitive understanding. So usually he does find the best play. 6-2, that's a good, good shot.
Easy play for Mochi. Coming out. Huh. So how does Sander play this one? There's so many options here. I mean, you hit with the six, right? And then you gotta figure out what's the best. Yeah, that's the play. It's the only logical play, actually. After seeing all the possible combinations. That's a strong reply from Mochi. So despite Sanders' careless blunder in the early game of game one, he's actually ahead in the PR because of Mochi's drop in the last cube action. Did Mochi make an illegal? Ah, there you go. Oh no. And then two. So just the transcriber, Mate, has to keep up here. We had a little bit of troubles with the transcription PC. That's why he didn't put hint on all moves. Something about the XG settings. It was actually a bug in XG. It kept reverting the, the settings. So it, it was slow. So he had to make the judgment call of which moves to display hint with and when he was able to do it. But I hope we've solved it now. Yeah, this uh, is getting close. If it wasn't for that um, that hanging blot on the 14 point, Sander could probably cube this. But let's just safety that blot first. It's gonna take away those few the few anti jokers that leaves a shot next time, and it's gonna give you the the market losers that you need to clear the midpoint when you roll a double. Okay, that's a good shot. And now next time, let's... Oh, actually, we have to look at the pip count as well. I was just looking at the structure. I think with 6-5 and 5-1 here for Mochi, I think Sandra can double next time. And Mochi's going to stay back with the goalkeeper. Yeah, this is a cube. Standard cube. And with 14 pips down, it's a very easy take for, for Mochi. He could even catch up in the race here. The decision is more on Sander here. So my rule... And the holding games are that you need to be 14 pips ahead before you double. And that's exactly what we are here. But this is better than a standard. Yeah, yeah, good cube, sa Sander. It's borderline decision, but he does have some market losers, right? If you roll a big double, for instance. It's really cu cool, that cube, by the way. The UPC golden cube. Double one for Mochi. Notice that he's he stays back with the goalkeeper. He would prefer to have it further back, but uh, unfortunately you can't move checkers backwards. That's a nice move by Sander there. That was more of a liability than an asset. The 11 point. Deuces. Ah, is he... Maybe he's forced to move from the, from the midpoint here, Mochi. And if he does, he has the single... Yeah, that's the play I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah the, the single uh, checker midpoint. Because look at Sanders blots in his home board. He can't just hit him with an ace. So I like that play from Mochi. The double deuces, that was a market loser. So luckily for Sander, he already cubed. Five two, no shots, no shots, Sander. Yeah, that's the five. I think I would play thirteen, uh, eight to six here, but I guess it doesn't matter too much. You can also just yeah, just go ahead and make the the one point. Six three. I don't think Mochi's gonna move his back checkers here. Wow. Okay. It's very close. So apparently the, I mean it's super close between all three potential moves here. You can run with the rear checker, you can break your anchor, or you can just stay put. And it's super close either way. Hmm. 
<laughs> so Mochi is going to burn some time here, but little does he know that it's a complete tie between all three move candidates. Wow, we've got 486 likes on this video so far. That is incredible. I wonder if it's a record or something. Well done, guys. Hmm. This is a tricky one. Nice play, Sandra. The race is sufficiently close. There are some advantages to keeping a four prime here. Plus, it was a very nice and flexible move. That was a good play, Sandra. It's not over yet, this uh, holding game position. Oh, <laughs> that's incredible. When the dice, uh, when, a, when a die land on the, on the corner, the corner of the die. Okay, so Sandra makes a slightly incorrect decision here. Oh, and he gets punished for it. The race was sufficiently close so that Sander actually would have preferred to keep some blocking power. It was a little bit too early to start clearing from the rear. Maybe a couple of pips more and it would have been fine. So dice on checker is legal, of course, in the UBC. Yeah, this is a straight race and it's actually quite close. 4-1, not a good roll from Sander. Mochi is catching up. Mochi might be a favorite here. He was down 20 pips just a couple of moves ago. Double five, one, two, three, four. We might see a recube next roll. I think we will actually, unless Sanders rolls. Nope. Not good enough, Sander. Yeah, this is just a huge market loss, the double five, so. Redouble pass, easy, easy play on both sides. Yeah, no need to think much here. Like Neil Casaras writes in the chat, Sander was punished for breaking the four prime. He really was immediately, and he probably regretted it after seeing that uh, double four. I think Sander's looking out in. See him staring out into the open space here, probably wondering whether it was correct or not to clear from the rear before that double four, because that actually lost him the game. But he's still ahead a, a bit on the PR here, but it's early in the match. We're going to see the PRs change a lot, most likely in the downwards direction. The split to the bar point from Mochi. That's a double hit if I know Sander. Oh yes. He loves the double hits. Double five from the bar. That's a good roll. So you have many ways of playing this, but only one way is correct. And that's apparently just simply just making the ace point here. He's going to be up in the race. There are two other plots in the position that he can shoot at, so making a blitzing play here really makes a lot of sense. Well played, Mochi. Uh, no! Why is that? Wow, it's, it was best. I thought of duplicating deuces by playing 15 to 14, but maybe Sanders seeing something I didn't. I guess there's some ace and three duplication here. Oh yeah, that's actually a very powerful ace and three duplication. But Sandra just saw it immediately, even though it was a tactical play. So much is tempted here to double with all those plots, but uh, correctly so, he didn't. Just make the five point. I don't think you're in a rush to pick up that blot on Sandra's two point. It's kind of a liability for Sandra. So in my opinion, this is a pretty easy play. Save that blot for later.
Nice move, Mochi. Sander needs to enter. He does. So what's the best way? Yeah, that seems like a good move to me. Again, Mochi is slightly tempted, but now Sander just got stronger. Doesn't make much sense here. He's trailing five pips. You need two out of three points in order to have a cube in a middle game situation like this. And you gain a point by having a significant game plan advantage in either priming, blitzing, or racing. And I would say um, Mochi only has an advantage in, pri uh, sorry, in blitzing here. Not in racing and not in priming. <laughs> yes, it's the blessing and the curse of rolling double fours. It's incredibly difficult to play it correctly. Mochi sees it though. This is a cool play, the double switch. I mean, Sander would make this play any day of the week. But of course, Mochi finds it as well. He didn't fall into the trap here. You got to know that idea. That's the that's the key. And that's the thing about playing this well playing at this level like these two guys are doing you gotta have the right idea all the time you know you, you gotta know all these ideas and know exactly when to apply them if you've never seen a switching play like this before where you go for the six to the two point it's very difficult to find it but when you do see it then you realize that it makes logical sense whoa mochi overrates his position a lot here that is a big mistake, and I don't see Sander passing this literally ever. I mean, there's no chance. No chance that Sander would pass this. Mochi overrates his own position here. He's only up five pips in the race, but he's kind of stuck with three back checkers. Good take by Sander. Wow, that really hurts Mochi's PR. That wasn't good, Mochi. Mochi's PR springs up to a 5.8. Oof. He hasn't found his A game yet. The Super Grandmaster. He's struggling. He's really struggling to find his A game. Whereas it seems that Sander, I mean, except for that careless blunder he made in game one with a 3 2 where he didn't split against the prime formation, he's been playing really well. Okay. <laughs> what about the five sander? Because you have a great incentive to unstack that heavy midpoint. Yeah, he does. Good play. And Sander's actually down in the race now, so it doesn't make much sense to race. So he's trying to stay back a bit with the rear checker. Okay, Mochi is looking for any creative plays here. The ace is kind of, kind, no, it's not really forced. You could actually play it in two different ways. I think the, the, the idea to apply here in this position is that you don't want to get hit because the race is too close. Mochi has a racing advantage by 15 pips after the move. So he doesn't want to get hit. Safety is really important. Nope, that's not the wrong idea and not the right idea. It's the wrong idea, Mochi. It's the wrong idea. You're leaving a shot when it it's really painful to get hit here. Oh, you would give away the racing advantage to Sander. Okay, this is a close game. It's almost 50-50 here because Mochi has a slight racing advantage, but Sander has the freedom advantage while Mochi is still stuck on Sander's five point. Sander, he does want to hit here because of the race. Okay, no shots. Sander knows that. Very clear play. Four one. I think it's the same principle here. You you wanna, you would like to make the five point board, but uh, you don't want to get hit, so you gotta move that blot. I would have made Mochi's play too, but. 
the computer has a slight preference of slotting the six point instead of the three point. Again, whatever you do, Sander, just don't leave a shot. Whether you want to play the double slot or you want to play 13 to 6, it doesn't really matter all that much. He's taking his time here, Xander, but he has plenty of time bank. 11 minutes to go. Mochi has slightly less than, less than 7 minutes. I think this is time to give up the midpoint, Mochi. Preserve your flexibility. Keep all of your checkers alive. Because he can't really keep the midpoint, right? He, it's impossible. He's going to bury a checker one way or the other. So the only way to preserve your flexibility and not bury checkers and not break your rear anchor. Wow, double five. Double five, so all of a sudden, Sander takes the lead. He's a two to one favorite here, Sander Lilov. That didn't change much, that was slightly below average, so Sander's probably up to like 69, 70% favorite here. 67 and a half. And now the score comes into play. And this is something that I know that me and Sander, we've actually studied this together. You know, gammon this positions. What is your recube doubling point at six away and five away? And um, let's see if Sander remembers the recube doubling point is supposedly 69 and a half percent so it's more or less the same as it would be for money actually for money the re redoubling point is around 72 percent so he can redouble slightly more aggressive in a gamblerless position like this than he can for money and i think sander intuitively knows this so seven pips in something that's almost a straight race it's not a whole lot Yeah, it falls slightly short of a redouble, this one. So we see Sanders winning chances here are 67.2% according to XG++. And he needs 69.5%. So it falls just short. I think Sanders, he knows he has to be slightly more aggressive with the redouble than he would be for money. Wow, he's shaking it. I mean, really good call by Sander here. He thought long and hard and there's the market loser. Just bring them in, Sander. You're playing a racing game now. And on this, Mochi can roll something. Double three. Okay, not bad. 12 pips. So what's that going to be? That's going to be 15 pips. It's not enough. I think it's a drop. Yeah. Mochi is down to 20.5%. Not quite good enough. Yeah. The redouble. And now Mochi is going to find the pass here. I'm pretty sure. His take point. Let me look it up. I have the table for you right here. The take point on a four cube leading five away, six away is 24.6% in a gammonless position. So it's basically two and a half percent higher than seven away, seven away or money game, which is equivalent of one and a half pips more or less in the race. So that's quite significant. So good drop from Mochi. That was quite uh, <laughs> good racing skills we saw there from Sander and his dice. Roll double five twice. We're up to 1,000 people watching it right now. That's so cool, guys. And we're only in day one. I expect the view count is going to go up as we progress and get closer to the 
final decision. <laughs> yeah, tricky little three here. So Mochi doesn't want to leave too many fly shots. Notice that Sandra made the minor split with his back checkers, which means that there's a lot of fly shots here. That's the play. Good play, Mochi. You know, it's ugly, but that is the play. Really nice, or, I mean, difficult to call it nice, but it was really nice that he find the, found the best play. So Dennis Culpepper asked me what table that I'm using for Recube to 4. I've got my own data. It's just uh, tables that I've generated myself, inspired by the professor, Dirk Schiemann. But I basically got tables for redoubling points at all scores in a seven point match. And of course also the take points. <laughs> oh, that's actually a blunder. I don't think he's gonna play this play. So mo usually Mochi looks at the al alternative play first. The play that's not his instinctual play. That seems to be the pattern of his his checker movement. So I don't think he's gonna make this play. And it would be a blunder to do so. It's too many shots and two blots. So you can leave fewer shots and just a single blot by playing 13 to five. And you can leave even fewer shots if you play 13 to 11, 8 to 2. Which is another, is, I mean, it's just, that's a difficult move to find as well because it's so ugly to play 8 to 2. But he is taking his time here, Mochi. Mochi is up in the race slightly. He achieved full freedom, so. Safety matters for Mochi here. He want to minimize shots. Um, but at the same time, <laughs> he's got such a stacked position, you know. He's got two super stacks. So you got to do something about that. Therefore, it seems wrong to move from the eight point anyway. Yeah, that's the play. Good. So we see it again and again. Mochi, first he moves his, his candidate play, and then he moves the, his intuitive play, which is usually what he ends up moving anyway. Oh, that's not a good dance. This is, okay, wait a minute, Sander might have a cube here. This is four away, Sander four away, five away. Sander can be aggressive in this position because he has gammons. The four away score is the most special score. No, this is a cube, Sander. It's a big mistake not to double. I he misses it. It's a blunder. Um, I think that's the only weakness we've seen so far in Sander's game. He hasn't adjusted well to these cubes at the match scores. And those are actually, in my opinion, for a player at Sanders level, a rather easy, easy thing to uh, to get right. It's like a low-hanging fruit. He's supposed to know that he can double more aggressively. And now it's, I mean, it's, he lost his market by a mile here. Huge pass. So it's one of those unique scores where the leader can be more aggressive and the trailer has to be more careful because the leader's four away. That's the thing. Yeah, this is a big pass. The score makes it an even bigger pass. It's probably like 150 for money, but at this score it's like 270. Big, big pass. Mochi has nothing here. He doesn't even have a pip count uh, lead. He's trailing nine pips. I mean, the only thing Mochi has got going for him here is that he's not on the bar, and if he's not put on the bar next roll, he has the seven point slotted, but good pass, good pass, Mochi. Good decision. So Mochi is grinding his PR down here. Little by little. So now we're back to that three-away, five-away score that I know that Sander has been drilling. The cube actions. Ooh, double five. Flashback to the 
game 12 from last year where Mochi rolled a double five in the fourth or fifth roll of the game and made a big blunder. But this time he got it right. Good play, Sanders. Better to stay back here in this situation where you don't want to get hit in the outfield. Getting hit inside Mochi's home board is not that bad because usually you can hit him right back. It's going to be a loose hit. Somebody's asking. Pierre Rosenswick is asking what PR means. It means uh, yeah, performance rating. It's essentially an error rate. On the Gamma Galaxy, we call it error rate. In XG, they call it PR, performance rate. Or performance rating. Slightly weird choice of terminology, actually. I prefer error rate, to be honest. It's self-explanatory. Yeah, I don't see Mochi not finding this best the best play here. Good play, Mochi. Oh, that's a double for Mochi here. Easy double. Five away, three away. The question is whether Sander can take it or not. I don't think he can. No, no, no. It's a huge drop. Sander has nothing. He's down 16 pips. He's on the bar, so he's getting blitz attacked. Yeah, yeah. Easy drop. No need to think too much here. And now Mochi is the player who is four away. So the score is three away Sander, four away Mochi. Being three away, of course you prefer to be three away. You're leading the match, but it's it's a very insignificant lead. Mochi has 43% match winning chances here from this position. So getting from four away to three away at this score, that point for Sander was only worth 7% match winning chances. It's and the reason is that being four away is super efficient. Being three away is slightly awkward. It's not that efficient. It's a little bit of a weird score. Oh, let's see if Sander can find the slotting play here. There's so much duplication going on. But it's difficult to find, huh? It's the way to find it is you first you have to realize that you can invite your opponent into a priming battle. And... That's good if you have advantageous uh, conditions to do so. And I think Sander has pretty advantageous conditions here. <laughs> Let's see if he finds it. He's thinking about it. 23 to 22 is also fine. No big deal. That play is weird. Okay, it's just a 10 million point mistake. Okay, I mean, the, the good thing about this play is that you're anchoring up when your opponent has 10 men in the zone. But all, already, now Mochi's beginning to have a prime formation. And you don't want to be anchored up when you're facing a prime formation, especially not on the 23 point. So Sanders probably is going to start looking to split that anchor very soon. It might be that Sander was biased of the score here since his opponent is is four away. Hmm. I mean, you want to get off the 23-point Sander, but how to do it with this roll? It seems almost impossible, right? Yeah, it is impossible. Good play, Sander. Nice play. It is actually the only play that makes sense, to be honest. It wasn't that difficult to find. Yeah, and Mochi being four away has to double extremely aggressively. That's a great cube from Mochi. Super good cube from Mochi here. He knows that he has to double aggressively at four away, three away. I call this specific score Gammon Go Light because it's kind of similar to the four away, two away Gammon Go just much less extreme. Oh, is Sander? Okay, he did take it. Okay, so it's confirmed that there was a 
an error in Mochi's uh, error rate in match two. We're not even sure, or I'm not sure if Sander won the error rate in that match. The score might be be 3-1. Um, it seems that Wilson had put the total error rate rather than the average error rate in his in his uh, error rate uh, label. So we'll try to get a get it sorted ASAP. That's a good shot from Sander Lilov. And the last three threes here, he can make the double hit and fight for the missing point in his prime. The key point right now is the four point and how beautiful is it that he can actually hit loose and go for it. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, you leave so many blots. You have some nice alternatives here, like making the 10 point. But I think Sander's gonna find the best play here. Yeah, I think he's gonna find it. It's a good move. Good move, Sander. Really nice. Crucial four from Mochi. He hangs in there. The match is still open. Wow, double four Joker. That's just his role, huh? Absolute destroyer from Sanders. Sanders shouldn't redouble here. He's doing the right thing. Like, why would he? Why would he risk the entire match when half of his wins are gammons already? And Mochi can still win this game, actually, because of all the amount of contact you still have in this position. Sanders to bring four checkers or five checkers home. Hmm. Mochi is standing up, walking around. He's feeling unlucky. You haven't lost yet, Mochi. See Mochi is really feeling the pressure here. Super unlucky so far. He's not playing his A game. <laughs> so, I mean, we've seen this before with Mochi having a slow start. Then he did that. Actually, he did that in 2019 and he did it again. Uh, I forgot which other year it was where he started off poorly in, in day one and then he just played majestically in yeah. day two and day three. <laughs> yeah, Sander has to choose between defense and offense here. I mean, it is quite nice to make the, the priming play here, but it's cl it was a small inaccurate move according to XG it would have been a little bit better to go for the connecting place the mobility freedom place he has the same choice here do you go for a back game connecting play or do you go for the offense I think the match score is also influencing the decision here but not big mistakes by Sander so now he wanna mobilize the back checkers in the best way possible. I think it's to come in with a four and then step up to Mochi's three point. Why would you come in on the 24 point center? It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah? Yeah. Exactly. Mochi keeps dancing. Well, if he can just come in, he can at least play a deep anchor holding game again Sanders looking to mobilize the back checkers that looks good it's again it's the same decision here are we playing 
connectivity during blitz or are we going for the attack and it seems that the computer strongly favors the connectivity during blitz moves and I think the, the match score has something to do with it. Sanders' gammon price is lower here since he only he's only going to win one extra point instead of two extra points when he wins the gammon. So it's actually a significant error, this one. He's simply stuck too deep with the backcheckers. Connectivity during blitz. You don't want your enemy surviving the blitz and then you've got five men back. And you end up in the disconnected state. Okay, small inaccuracy, but I don't hate it. There's the ace for Mochi. Mochi is kind of relieved here. He saves a lot of gamblers by having an anchor game rather than a full closeout. <laughs> yeah, it looks decent to me. Sanders just trying to bring his Jaggers home. So I think uh, I would definitely move uh, 24 to 22, just to step up, get launch ready. Okay, you could do this. Yeah, it's reasonable. It's reasonable. There's one of the advantages of staying back. Sanders got a direct shot. So I just got a message from Wilson, the producer, that uh, that they're going to double check the error rate from match two right after this match. Wow, one six from the bar from Sander. Huge roll. Mochi's PR is coming down, of course, 4.5, but he's just not good enough. You're playing against Sander Lilov. Not looking good for Mochi here. I think one of the key ideas here we saw in this game is how uh, the um, the incentive for Sander to play connecting plays with the back checkers, getting them out of there, rather than going for a forward hit in his own home board. When you have a prime, like a five prime or six prime. Because of the match score. That was one of the, I think, cool ideas we have saw. We saw. So it's always about learning from the machine, right? Trying to figure out why does the machine want to play the way it does. Four one. Nice roll. Gets to clear the seven point, which were the, tr which was the trouble point, with no real, no real, real risk. Double three. There's a little bit of a decision here for Sander. I mean, it's nice to get checkers off the board, right? You can't just play all four of the checkers from the six point to the three point, just clear from the rear. That that doesn't work. That's too inflexible. So that's one two. Okay, so now you got two left, Sander. One, two, wait, okay. There's, there are quite a few combinations here. One, two, that seems like a good place to start. 
Two, four. Yeah, you could play this. That's actually the best play. Well played, Sander. Well played, Sander. Three, two. That's nice. No shots. Is that the best way? Isn't it better to stack them up on the three point? It's got to be close. Two, one. That's an excellent roll. Yes, definitely clear from the rear, right? No, I oh, wow, you should clear, you should clear the five point. Oh wow, that's such a rare play. I mean, it's such a specific tactical scenario where that is correct. It's usually not the right idea. So I don't fault Sandra for not seeing that idea. I didn't see it. I don't know if I could have seen it if I, uh, if I was the player playing over the board, but. Mochi made an illegal play. Santa points it out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember when I saw that last time where you could clear the six point with rather good flexibility. Yet it was still better to clear the five point out of turn. Here, however, maybe he should go for the gammon here. It could be. It's close. 24 milli points between. It's better to, to clear from the rear. Play it safe. But this is a tough decision over the board because he's definitely maximizing gammons by making this play. But he's not cleaning up his liability, which is the five point. Yeah. Tough decision over the board. He's going to burn some time here. So there's a trade off, right? Do you want to maximize gammons here? and sacrifice some wins? Or do we just want to maximize wins? <laughs> yeah, this is really tough, Sander. For each additional gammon percentage you win, you can sacrifice half a percentage of game wins, a single wins. Okay, Sander goes for the gammon. It's a small inaccuracy or small mistake, but no big deal. I can certainly see where he's coming from. <laughs> uh, as long as you can win a gammon here. You've got 29% gammon in it. So Sanders probably counting the crossovers here. How many crossovers does Mochi have to save the gammon? He's got one, two, three, four, five, six crossovers. Sanders got 10 crossovers, which means he's within four crossover range. So he does have a decent chance of winning a gammon. That's not a good roll for Mochi. He had preferred to roll much bigger. He's one joker from winning the gammon. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, this is his chance. Mochi, it's now or never. You gotta roll that one. He doesn't. Oh, he comes in. <laughs> oh, Mochi's very confused. Five and three. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> pressed the clock. He, I mean, did many things there. But he does have good chances of, he does have good chances of uh, saving the gammon here. Four, five. I think he's a big favorite to save the gammon. But Sander could get lucky. 6-1. Yeah, Sander leaves himself a double three or better. 4-1. Mochi knows that one. Yeah, you want to get the ones. Now it's just 2-1 that doesn't take off a shot next time. Ooh, a cock to die. We get a re-roll. Let's see. 5-1 for Sander. Okay. Okay, there is the 2-1. There is the 2-1. No, Mochi gets it. He gets it. He saves the gammon. So Sanders up 6-3 Crawford. He's off to a, an amazing start, a flying start. And if you're new to the match here, to the live stream, remember to smash the like button. We've got uh, how many concurrent live viewers? We've got more than 1,100 live viewers right now. It's incredible. And 555 likes. That's got to be some sort of a record. So thanks a lot, guys. Keep it coming. We are going to be streaming the next two days as well. This is just day one. Remember, it's like watching the Tour de France. It is a marathon, not a sprint, this UBC final. 
it could go all the way to 12 matches. But it's, if Sandor continues like this, playing at this level and getting all the best dice, it might be shorter. But I suspect that Mochi is going to come back tomorrow and maybe even in later today and begin to find his groove, his A game. Yeah, that's a nice little dilemma here. Do you make the defensive high anchor or do you go for the four point? Um, okay. Mochi goes for the offensive play. I think he's biased because of the match score. He wants to win a gammon here. That would get him one win closer to, to winning the match. He would be within the range of just a single game rather than winning two games or rather than being forced to win two games. So I think that biased Mochi's play a little bit because the 18 point was simply just better. Uh, especially when you have three men back, then the priority of establishing an advanced anchor goes up. And the 10 point was already very powerful for Mochi, but not a big deal. Sanders got a decision here. Do we build a three point and unstack that super stack on the six point? Very awkward to have so many checkers on one point. Or do you try to make a run for it. Running with the rear checker has such a big upside because every time you get missed, you can get full freedom. But he does find... Oh, actually, the second best play what would have been slightly better to run. But I I think I would have done the same as Sandra just because it's so ugly to have the... Uh, the six checkers on the six point. I guess Sandra is looking at, I mean, he could be looking at uh, putting the checker on the three point. It does give a little bit of attacking flexibility, but it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit weird. It's not really where the checker belongs, but at the same time, playing 13 to eight, it stacks the eight point. It's not very flexible. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It's actually a tie between the two best plays double five that's probably a really good roll for mochi i think we're going to see him step up with the anchor here to the 15 point simply because uh the race is rather close actually no it is slightly better to just play it like this nice play mochi okay so he probably just studied this mochi knowing that six pips behind it's enough to stay back to simply stay all the way back And now we've got the first shot here. Duplicating the aces, very nice. Mochi needs an ace both to hit and to cover. He doesn't get any. Yeah, he stays back, of course. Sandra wants to cover up that blot. Yeah, that's nice. Hmm. Yeah, good play, Mochi. Really good play. You could have been tempted to come out there with the six, but he resisted the temptation. So now Sanders forced to dump checkers behind Mochi's anchor. So his three point there. It's highly inflexible with the checkers there. Sanders re restarting Mochi's time bank. Very nice. Yeah, you got to do something, Mochi. You can't break your home board. So that's the last thing we want to do. And the race is rather close. You know, it's not it's not obviously a good thing for Mochi to just stay back on the 24 point with the goalkeeper. You know, the, as the race gets closer and closer, the more you want to be out. I mean, you don't want to break your board, right, Mochi? So 
What else are you gonna play here? Yeah. Sander being ahead in the race, he's looking to... Okay, yeah. He's looking to not leave any shots, obviously. Look at this play from Mochi, huh? That's the computer play. Okay, so this is kind of similar. It's probably not a big mistake, this one. It's kind of similar, yeah, 11 millipoint inaccuracy. Sander is tempted to pay now, but yeah. Okay, he does it, 46 millipoint mistake. The problem is the cube is in the middle. No, wait a minute, <laughs> my bad, I'm tired. <laughs> that, that is, it's the Crawford game, so that can't really be that important here, sorry, my bad. <laughs> Commentators get tired too. Single checker holding game here from Mochi. He's staying back. There are some ugly rolls. That's not one of them. That's an incredible roll here from Sandra Lilov. And he's all the way up to 89% winning chances in this position. Mochi needs to respond immediately with a four. He doesn't. And now Sanders in cruise control. Wow, this is almost like a gen position. Mochi has to get really lucky now if he wants to stay in it. And it looks like a two-point win for Sander again. Wow. I think Mochi needs to stay back now. Okay, he chooses to save a six. Interesting. Yeah, saving a gammon doesn't make any sense. He does have a small chance. 4-3, yeah. This is Mochi's chance. He needs Sandra to roll something. Oi, that's not, that's not it. That was a game winner, and this is basically a gin position. Mochi is probably winning this 0.1 or 0.2% of the time. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just immediately fist pump. It looks like another two-point win for Sander. We still have to confirm match two if it really was 2-0 for Sander and if Mochi's error rate was correct. I mean, of course, there's we just put up the vote on uh, YouTube who will be the UBC champ. I think Sander is in a pretty big favorite right now. I mean, but of course, it's not over yet. We've seen Mochi do the comebacks before. Uh, Mochi hasn't really found his A game. I mean, I'm, I feel like I've seen this narrative before. I've heard this narrative before. It's not the first time where Mochi is underperforming in day one, and then he comes back and plays literally like a backgammon god in day two and day three. But he has 20 minutes now to get get another break before they come back and play the fourth match of the day. Um, we will double check the if the match score is correct. I think actually that the, it is correct. I think Sanders leading 6-0 right now. But we will double check 